Hi, I'm Matt Jackson, and this is Next Level Carpentry. You know, sometimes amazing tools catch me by surprise. And Merrill band clamps came up on my radar recently, and they're a perfect example. I've seen them in the MLCS catalog over the years, but never realized how useful and effective they are for certain applications. When a good friend said they worked great for gluing box newel posts and large mitered window casings, I gave them a try for gluing hexagonal tubes for my router lathe video. I was so impressed by how well they worked that I contacted MLCS about doing a video review. And fast forward to now, this video showing how versatile these band clamps are for gluing a triangular frame, a large miter frame from these pieces, and a heptagonal tube just because I can. So to get an idea how Merrill adjustable corner clamps can help you get professional results on projects you're doing, stick around and I'll show you how to use them. The Merrill adjustable corner clamps or band clamps come in this simple box and they're set up with four jaws for clamping four-sided things. The Shopmaster set that I have here comes with four of the clamps plus eight extra corner pieces when project size, corner count, or production run is larger. Picking a clamp out of a box, you can see that they're metal where they need to be, so they're sturdy enough to withstand constant heavy use. And every piece is adjustable, so they adapt to all sorts of applications. There's 23 feet of steel band coiled up inside this little wind-up can, and when fully deployed, it can clamp a frame almost five and a half feet square. You can buy a replacement steel band should you ever need one, although it doesn't seem like this tough, high tensile steel band would ever fail from normal use. Despite their unusual appearance, using these clamps is pretty straightforward. Just loosen this rough adjustment handle and pull out enough steel band to make it around the frame you're working on. And then wiggle the corner pieces into place and then snug up the handle with a twist. Keep in mind that this hex head bolt is only used to remove or replace the band itself, so I just leave it alone. Make sure all the pieces are close to even on each corner before applying final clamping pressure because that helps prevent racking of the frame. This rough adjustment handle needs to be pretty tight to keep the band from slipping when applying pressure with the clamp handle. And with that set of steps, you can see that everything is clamped up incredibly solid and that the frame is perfectly square with even pressure on all four joints. To remove the clamp, once the job is done, just loosen the handle to take pressure off the steel band and then loosen the rough adjustment handle and cinch the band up to bring the jaws together for storage. And I like to back off the screw handle also to set the clamp up for using it next time. With all that done, just wind up the steel band back inside the little can. And use caution here, because the high tensile steel band is like a clock spring when coiled. And when you let go of the little crank handle, it'll wrap your pinkies if you're not careful. And it's interesting that some product review comments imply that there's a wind up spring in here that quits working. That's just a little funny and shows how misunderstood these clamps can be. To add or remove corner pieces, just push down on the little plastic clips and slide them off. Simple as that. It can be a little tough to remove the first time or two, but it's not like you have to add or remove jaws frequently. And it's a bit embarrassing to admit it, but the first time I used these for gluing hexagons and had to add extra jaws, I removed the strap end bolt, pulled the strap out, and then threaded extra clamps on over the end of the strap. Oh! Much easier to use the little clippy things for what they're designed to do. And the little clips are directional, so make sure you get them faced the right way, put them back on. I did a written review of the Merrill band clamps for toolsofthetrade.net. And I'll put a link to that review in the description below this video. But I wanted to include two things about the clamps use and design that could be improved. The first is this locking handle. When it's tightened down, it holds the band securely, but it ends up in an awkward angle. And when I'm trying to lay this clamp flat on a work surface, I have to make sure that I 
turn it over this way so this clamp doesn't get in the way. If there was ever a version 2 of this clamp, I'd like to see some kind of a cam action lever here that snugs the band down and keeps the tightening mechanism in the same plane as the rest of the clamp. The other nit I have to pick is with the can where the steel band is wound up for storage. It's essential that there's some place to store that extra steel band. And this round can is compact and practical, but the way this little handle whips around as the steel band releases its tension is always a little bit startling when I'm using the clamps. I can't think of another cost-effective practical way of getting this done, but if there was a way to improve that, it would just help the usability of the clamp a bit. And that's really all you need to know about these clamps before using them. The rest you'll learn from experience when you put them to use. And with that quick overview, of the function of these narrow band clamps. I've made up some pieces parts to show these clamps in action on a few different projects. These parts will make a large four-sided frame. This will make a small triangular shadow box. And this stack of parts will make a heptagonal tube just because I can. And yes, I had to ask Google what to call a seven-sided polygon tube. And I chose this variety of projects because they show the versatility of these clamps quite nicely. And I'll set these pieces parts aside and start with the large square frame because that's kind of the most conventional of these three projects. Make sure your corner cuts are accurate and that opposing pieces are of identical length because no clamp in the world is going to fix bad miters. Although these band clamps will definitely produce better results than other clamping system if cuts are marginal. Make sure the screw handle is backed off for maximum adjustment range with the threads on the clamp. Expand the band to fit around the frame. And then wiggle jaws into place and apply light pressure. This is a pretty big clamping project. I've actually gone to a 4x8 sheet of melamine particle board for a work surface. And I'll demonstrate that this can be done alone, but it's easy to see how an assistant in the shop for a project like this would make things a little more simple. You get a little more clamp out of that can. Pull this last clamp into position. And now I'll slide the band with finger pressure for a rough adjustment and then twist the red handle to begin to apply pressure to the frame, making sure the rough adjustment handle is snug so the band doesn't slip. You can see on this corner where the pieces are slightly misaligned, I want to make sure that the sharp points of the miters are lined up, the corner clamp pieces are centered on the joint this way. And I could go around and make those adjustments on each corner with the clamp pressure that I've added. And watch out when you let go of that handle because it'll wrap your knuckles if you let it. It's going to shift the frame around. On thin frames, it's important to adjust these clamp jaws up and down. If you slip them to one side like this, it can come off or twist the frame. So it's important to have those, the frame centered up in those jaws if it's thinner. And I like what I've got all the way around. So I'll just add the rest of the clamp pressure, tightening the rough adjustment handle if necessary if the band starts to slip. There's a heck of a lot of pressure on that frame that holds everything tight and with an alignment. And this frame has no glue on it. And I've done all this ahead of time to dry fit the frame. And this is exactly the reason why I go through all that. Everybody knows that a 45 degree miter is one of the toughest there is to fit. And you can see there's a slight discrepancy here and the pieces are a little bit misaligned on the long point of those angles. But what this tells me is that my miters are just a little bit sharp, like 45.002 degrees instead of 45, so that miter isn't fitting as tight as it needs to. So what I found out through this process of dry fitting is that I've got to adjust my miters just a little bit to get this all to glue up nice and tight like I expect it to. So I backed off the clamp, took the frame apart, adjusted the miter angle by about a quarter of a degree to get these all fitting tight, looking good. Retensioned the band and you can see that even without glue, this frame is nice and sturdy and I'm happy with the dry fit because all the corners fit just like this one. And cross taping the frame to check for squareness. I've got 60 and 5 8 strong in that direction and 60 and 5 8 strong in that direction. 
and with a frame this large and potentially unwieldy, I think you'll agree that that's pretty remarkable to get that kind of accuracy on this frame where there's no racking in it and I'm using just one clamp to tighten it up and hold it together. And now that I'm 100% satisfied with the dry fit of this frame, I'll back it off once again, glue up the corners and reclamp it. And all I'm doing is undoing the pressure from the clamp handle, not the rough adjustment handle because I'll be coming back to this size once these corners are glued. And I'll point out that I added a single number 20 biscuit joint to each of the corners on this large frame because the potential racking pressure on the glued up frame is going to be stronger than any glue in the joint. And so the biscuit will fortify that strength for the final assembly. With the frame disassembled, I can add glue to the miters and the biscuits. Besides adding strength for this type of assembly, the biscuits really help line things up as the clamps are positioned, etc. This is actually just a sample glue up frame. It's not for any particular job. So I'm not fussing quite as much with the glue up process as I might if this was a finished piece of window casing or an actual picture frame for artwork that was going to get stained. But it's fine for the purposes of this demonstration. And I numbered all the corners in case there was anything magic about the fit of one miter to another. So I'm putting them back in the exact order that I took them apart. If everything is 100% accurate and consistent, it shouldn't matter. But if there was anything about the dry fit that was specific to the way the pieces were put together, I've compensated for it by numbering the corners. And I think you'll agree that anything that's awkward or tricky with this clamp would only be magnified using a different type of clamping system to get the same job done. But since I've gone through the dry fit process, I know that I have a clear target to shoot for and that when I get everything lined up the way it needs to be, everything's going to fit. I wouldn't want to do all this the first time through, have everything glued up and then discover that I needed to adjust my miter by a quarter of a degree because then I'd have all that messy glue to deal with at the same time. I can turn this on a diagonal to work with these corners. And I'm making sure that the inside corners are lined up and that the corner clamps are centered on the miters. As I get it dialed in, I just increase the clamping pressure a little bit. Make sure everything is copacetic as I put the screws to it, which I can do now because everything is just looking just ducky. If I was going into production on a job and had to make a dozen of these, I would get a better clamping table that would hold the whole setup and then probably put some fixture blocks in to make the alignment and positioning process go just a little bit smoother. But for a one-off job, frame this big to get this kind of accuracy, it's pretty sweet. I'll do a quick double check of the cross tape, which I'm shooting for 60 and 5 8 strong. And that is perfect. With the clamp pressure applied, I give this a few hours to dry and take it out of the clamps and call it good. So I'm not sure how I'll trim this down in the video because after all, I'm just trying to show use of the clamps themselves, not how to build a big square frame and fit up the miters, etc. But I hope the steps that I've shown demonstrate the kind of results you can get with a Merrill band clamp on a large unwieldy project and still get excellent results on the fit of the whole frame assembly. So I'm just going to set this frame aside to dry. I'll reset up the workspace and go through the steps for gluing up that triangular shadow box. It'd probably make for zippier video if I used a small square frame like this as an example to demonstrate using Merrill clamps on a square frame rather than get into that large gangly thing back there that's drying. But I want examples at Next Level Carpentry to show the extremes of things that are possible and things that you're likely to encounter doing the work that I'm showing rather than a quick little clickbait thing gluing up a little frame that anybody could do. And I guess another example of that is gluing up this triangular shadow box frame. I'm not going into the process that I use for cutting these 
long sharp miters, which is a whole other video in itself. But to give a good idea of the versatility of these clamps, I decided to do a three-sided shadow box, again, to show some of the unusual things you can do with the clamps, not the typical, normal, or usual things that you might expect. The first thing that needs to happen to glue up this three-sided frame is to remove one of the four jaws from the clamp. So I'll just back off on the clamp pressure, loosen the rough adjustment handle, and pull out a little extra strap, and then use finger pressure to push down and remove the clamp. You don't have to let it go flying off onto the floor like that if you don't want, but you might want to get in practice because it's bound to happen. Once the extra corner piece is removed, just slide the clamp aside. And for the dry fit of this triangular frame, I'll use masking tape to hold these pieces together. And I'm using a good 3M masking tape I like, and I'm using it in the two inch width because these corners are so sharp, it's easy for them to tear tape, regardless of how good it is. And just to be safe, I'm gonna double it up like so, and I'll just stand the frame up and let the masking tape hold the corners snug, like so. And then I'll rough fit the band around the frame. I'm gonna flip this clamp over so that the handle tightens in the up position. And I'm just pulling out enough of the band to get around here until it's close for fit. And pull the band in for rough adjustment and tighten the rough adjustment handle. And then I'll wiggle these clamps up about halfway in the frame. Bring on a little bit of clamp pressure, even up the jaws as I'm going. And that gives a pretty good idea of how the dry fit is going to be. And because of the height of this board, the miters are a little open at the top and the bottom because the clamping pressure is in the middle. So I'm going to stop the video, go through the process, and add a second clamp so I get one at the top and one at the bottom. And I'm going to deploy that second clamp now. I've got the jaw removed, make the rough adjustment, and I'll slide this clamp up towards the top of the frame and bring on some pressure. Notice that I've put these clamps at opposing angles, so if there's any racking of the frame, this helps equalize it. With that second clamp on, I'll go handheld here so you can see how tight the miters fit in this dry fit, and that's plenty good for the glue up. And just like the big square frame, once I'm satisfied with the dry fit, I'll back off the clamps, get everything ready, apply some glue, and put it back together. And this process is pretty straightforward, so I'll just zip through it and get some glue on here. If this project was more than an example for the video, I would have all these parts sanded, routed, grooved, whatever they needed to be ahead of time. Save the trouble of working through all those difficult steps after the glue up is complete. So I always want to make sure there's glue down in the long point on the outside because it'll force the glue up towards the other side of the miter. Just want to make sure that front edge isn't starved of glue. And that masking tape really helps with the glue distribution during this process. And I'll skip discussion about the finer points of gluing this up because my intent is to demonstrate the use of the clamps, not necessarily an exemplary job of glue up. At this stage I just bring in moderate clamping pressure once again, make sure everything's lining up before I get serious and really bear down on the clamps. I'm centering up these pieces on the corners to get the long points to line up. It's doing better there. And once things are all copacetic, you can bear down on that clamp and get quite a bit of pressure on this glue up. And I'll flip this over, get everything lined up so that I can keep an eye on that joint as it tightens up. And I'm completely happy with the way that glue up went. Those miters are wonderfully tight. Get the right musician, they could play a tune with this clamp. I'm going to throw in a little tip here for cleaning this glue squeeze out from a tight inside corner. And this was actually the first woodworking tip that I ever had published back in the late 1970s or early 1980s, believe it or not. It went into Woodsmith Magazine. And the tip is to take a large diameter drinking straw from like a milkshake, cut off a clean end, and just put the end of that straw down in that corner. It'll scoop up the glue and just snip the end off and repeat the process until the glue squeeze out's out of there but you can use both ends of a straw and snip them out when they're full. It'll soak up quite a bit of glue in, in a big hurry. And then I just take a sharpened putty knife to clean out anything that's left over. 
And that's about all there is to that, the glue up of this small triangular shadow box frame using Merrill band clamps. And I hope that I've demonstrated how well this works for clamping these awkward corners, especially when compared to using C-clamps and extra glued on, tacked on corner blocks to get the job done. After about an hour in the clamps, you can pop these guys off the triangular frame, leaving this a wonderfully rigid assembly with super tight miters that I'm extremely happy with the results using the Merrill band clamps. Well, last but not least, as promised, I wanna show how to use Merrill clamps for gluing up a heptagonal tube, and yes, I called it a seven-sided tube too before I looked it up. And the first step in that process is going to be adding additional jaws to the Merrill clamps so they have seven each. Using these little slip-off clips to get the job done. And by pushing down and in, they do slide off much easier. And I'll be honest with you, it's kind of a little tricky getting used to those plastic clips. But I think now that I've got the hang of it, I'm happy with the way they work. They are directional, one side, goes on first with these two little lugs, but even if they can be a little fussy, it's still a great system for adapting the same clamp to different projects. And I'll use the same steps to add extra corner pieces to two more clamps, so I have three clamps, each having seven corner pieces for the glue up of this seven-sided tube. The next step is to lay out the tube segments so that I can apply assembly tape and roll this into a tube. I pre-selected these pieces for grain and color match and numbered the pieces accordingly. And I'll use a lockdown rip fence to help align and orient the pieces. And I've got my numbering sequence set up for the orientation I'm after. And to align these seven pieces without adding biscuit joints, I'm gonna use two inch wide masking tape because the surfaces are a little bit rough and three quarter inch tape is, just isn't enough to hold it. And just like with other assemblies, I cheat the pieces so that the edge of this piece laps over the piece before it. I'll do a pretty close alignment of one end of the pieces, although I have extra length built into this so it can be trimmed flush later. I've got to really push this masking tape down to get it to stick to this rough sawn surface, but two inch 3M masking tape should be up to the task. The slight overlap of the mitered edges is what puts stretch into the masking tape to pull the corners nice and snug for this dry fit assembly. And because this is a rough sawn pre-finished product, I didn't have the luxury of taking the twist out of these pieces beforehand. So I'm gonna be relying on the clamp pressure and the somewhat rough nature of the material to make up for that less than ideal condition of these pieces. Once I've got the masking tape firmly pressed down, I'll take this fence out of the way and cheat a little bit to flip this assembly over. I'm just sliding a piece of wood under one edge of this, all the while praying my masking tape stays in place. I think this will show in the camera, but I'm just sandwiching all these boards between these two pieces of wood. to flip the whole business over. And then I can set those aside. But then I'm just gonna carefully flip these pieces into position as they roll up. And I don't wanna go too far and overstress the tape. And I'm thankful that all the tape is held together because you can imagine it wouldn't take much torn tape to end up with a complete fracas with this whole thing. But that's what I'm after right there, a heptagonal tube. Seven sides of these pieces all held together with masking tape for a dry fit. Once the tube is loosely assembled with masking tape for the dry fit, I'll bring a Merrill clamp into position and set the tube down in the middle of it, loosen the rough adjustment handle so that I can bring these jaws into place. And there's a little bit of shuffling and wiggling involved to get these clamps in position. But like I said earlier with that big square frame, I want next level carpentry videos to show what's possible at the extremes, not conventional things that are all down pat where there's really not that many questions to answer. Once I've got the band clamp roughly adjusted, I can reposition the tube and wiggle the clamp into a little more favorable clamping position. And I'll have to say again, compared to any other clamping method for such an unusual polygon with all these pieces parts where the joints have to all fit up, I'd probably end up arguing with anybody that said there was another system that worked quicker, better, or more effectively. And the twist in the boards and some of the inconsistencies in the boards make this process of lining everything up just a little more difficult. But there's enough pressure in these clamps and enough strength in these 
seven glue joints that I'm confident the twist and the bowl come out of the boards and the final miters will be every bit as tight as this and make one heck of a strong assembly when it's all set up. So for this assembly, I'm satisfied with the results of this dry fit using just one clamp. I don't need to go through all the steps of dry fitting with three clamps because the results I'm seeing with just this one clamp convince me that the final assembly and glue up is going to be just great. But before I take this dry fit apart, I'm going to add another wrap of tape in the middle and double up all three of them so that once I got the glue and fold this tube up, I don't end up with a fracas on my hands. Some of the effect of the warp and twist in these pieces is showing up as I go to wrap these up. And what you're seeing right here is a cross between a master carpenter and a duck. Cool and calm on the surface and paddling like mad underneath. I've got to apply the glue on this last face. And I'm happy with that whole business. If any of those tape joints pop while I'm working on this, I'm going to have messy glued up pieces flying everywhere. And as long as everything stays together while I get this first clamp set up, I'm going to look like a rock star. And I've left quite a bit of screw room here. Dial in on this assembly and not run out of band length. Now that I've got that snugged on there, it's a bit of an insurance policy. I'll call it fracas insurance. And a smarter guy might have picked a simpler project for a demonstration example for a video. But again, what I really want to show is how difficult things are possible with this setup. And again, I'll apply these clamps with the handles pointing to different corners. So I have the second clamp. And make sure that the long points on the outside of these miters are lining up nicely. The piece is a little out of alignment because of a warp in those slats. But that is just ducky as that lines up going around. I'm checking this bottom row to make sure everything's going to work there now that I have a second clamp on here for insurance. I can do this one more time with the last clamp. It's a lot easier to put the work into the clamp than to put the clamp onto the work that I found. And I violated a, one of my cardinal rules here and I have two of these handles lined up. Everybody watching the video probably saw me doing that. And maybe you were even screaming at your screen, hey, you're putting the clamp going the wrong direction, and I didn't hear you. Well, I appreciate you trying to let me know. Good news is, it is not an unsolvable problem. You can see me pulling these slats into position. All the error in the warp of all the pieces just projected up to this last clamp. So I'm dealing with them all at once. But it's not that tough to get those things lined up. And for rough sawn material, all those miters line up quite nicely. And with the clamps in place, I can remove the masking tape because it's done its job. And now I can proceed to do preliminary glue cleanup on these miters. And in this case, I'm using my favorite sawdust and a wire brush to pull the glue out of the rough sawn texture of the wood. After leaving this tube to dry overnight, I can just remove the clamps, which is a whole lot easier than putting them on in the first place. After removing the clamps and cleaning up a little bit of glue squeeze out, I was able to trim the ends flush on this heptagonal tube so that it's complete along with these other projects. Although I could go on indefinitely with examples showing how useful and effective these Merrill band clamps are, I hope that this overview gives you an idea of just what's possible and how they can benefit you in projects you're doing or planning. And I definitely want to give a shout out to Mitch and MLCS for collaborating with Next Level Carpentry by sending a Shopmaster clamp set for review in this video. It might not be obvious to all viewers, but I want to mention the chicken and egg principle here. And that is that I discovered and used these Merrill band clamps and found out how well they work before getting them, not the other way around. It's a small but important distinction to me because I really want viewers and subscribers to know that I don't endorse products or tools that don't add tangible value to the work I do here at Next Level Carpentry. Merrill adjustable corner clamps are available directly through MLCS 
along with an amazing variety of router bits of every possible description, or from Amazon with pricing that allows you to put a serious squeeze on glue joints, but not on your tool budget. And I'll include links to both sources in the video description below, so you can get them individually in a picture frame package and in the Shopmaster set with package pricing so you're covered for any project. And right about now you might be expecting me to say, but wait, there's more. But I won't. I just want to say I really hope that you found this video helpful and informative because it's my goal to continue to upload video that I think you'll find useful. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. And for now, thanks for watching. Oh, but wait, I'm going to do a stress test on this square frame to see just how strong these corners turn out when glued up using these clamps. That's pretty strong. And a close up of the failed joints showing me that biscuits actually split in two, so it was the strength of the biscuit there, and on one corner the biscuit simply pulled out of the slot, which tells me to maximize the strength of this setup, I would want to pay more attention to how thoroughly the surfaces were coated with glue. Bottom line is that's way more stress than the frame should ever be exposed to.